Hey guys, Chris at the Ultimate Recycler. I've just had two old CRT TVs dropped off in the e-waste. I don't know if they work or not, but um, there's no secondary market for these things, even if they work in perfect condition. So we're going to scrap them out. But in saying that, there are some of these earlier CRT TVs that are quite sought after. Uh, primarily the, the more expensive brands. Now these are just really quite cheap brands. Uh, Panasonic, this is more of a just a budget TV, I think, this one. And Orion, don't know much about that brand. But the thing to check is on the back of them, where the outputs are, and we'll just pan around here. If you see one with a SCART connector, and I'll try and insert a picture of one in this video now, just so you know what it looks like. This one hasn't, it's just got some standard outlets there. And this one's much the same. But the ones with the SCART connectors apparently are quite sought after for uh, the retro gaming because I believe these uh, picture tubes have a much uh, a much better refreshing rate or refresh rate or something. I'm not sure of the technicalities, but I believe they're much better for video games than what uh, modern LCD screens are. And the older they're getting, there's less and less of these around because so many have gone to landfill. And the right ones now are actually commanding pretty good dollars. And do a quick search on eBay, um, CRT TV, and you'll find certain ones actually get pretty good money. Now, the only th other thing I was told by a friend of mine that if you get any with a 19-inch picture tube, this one's 21, or thereabouts, 20, I think. And this one's a bit smaller, but it's 20 still. They're always measured diagonally. So if you get a 19 inch picture tube, and it will say on the sticker on the back of it, if you're a bit unsure of the sizing, those tubes will fit in arcade machines. And again, the uh, retro kind of uh, gamers and people that like those vintage arcade machines are going to be looking for picture tubes. So don't throw those out, but as far as the rest of them go, pretty well just scrap them out. There's a bit better scrap value in these than what there is in modern flat screen TVs. Um, so what I'm going to do here is, is just scrap them out for the main parts, the parts that I save. I'm not going to worry about circuit boards or anything or pulling individual parts off boards. Uh, I'll just take you through this. I'm going to time it, but we'll get a really accurate idea of how long it takes to pull the main bits out of these TVs. We'll put the cases back on them after that and they can go out to the transfer station so they won't end up in landfill. All right, so I'll lay them both forward. We'll pull the back covers off them and we'll have a look at what we find. Okay, let's start with the Orion. We'll lay it down. Hopefully I don't get in your road too much so you can see this. And take the cord for a start. And we'll pull out the main casing screws. And we need to take the screws out of the little output block. Case should come off. All right, let's have a quick look. So the main things we're after here is the uh, yoke on the back of the picture tube. It has quite a lot of copper wire on it. Uh, there's a thick taped cable that runs around the picture tube. That's known as a degaussing cable, and that's got good copper in it. There's not much on the board. I'm not going to worry about anything on the board. So we're really just after those two bits. We'll possibly take this braided wire as well. That actually is tinned copper. Um, and sometimes I do take the speakers, but at the moment I've got plenty of speakers in the shop and most of you won't have a market for speakers. So I'm just gonna grab those things and then put the cover back on and we're done. Need to be a little careful pulling the board off the back. That's the most delicate part of the picture tube. They do have a vacuum in them. So if you break that, they can implode and then throw glass out. Usually it just breaks the neck off and hisses, but you kind of don't want the thing to um, to throw glass everywhere. Plus it's harder to dispose of if it's broken. All right, the yoke comes off usually just with a couple of screws on clamps here, which are usually stainless steel, but I save them because I can sell them as clamps. So with both clamps off, and a bit of a twist on the yoke. 
This one's pretty tight. Okay, I just got interrupted by lunch, and you've got to grab lunch when it's going. So we got up to this. This one was quite tight. I did lever it a little bit with a screwdriver to break the seal because they're kind of glued on. And usually a bit of a, a twist and they'll sort of crack and slide that off. So very easy to get that off. As I said, be careful of the neck of the, uh, the picture tube. Right, our trusty cutters. Let's just cut the wire off the yoke and we'll deal with the yoke separately. You can see there's quite a bit of copper on there. So we'll throw that in the box for now. And the box just went on the ground. Uh, now all we're going to take, I don't want the, the um, boards. I'm just going to take a bit of the wire. Because insulated copper wire pays pretty well. And it's, the prices of copper have been excellent lately. So it's always worth grabbing the wire because really it takes very little time. Now, this TV hasn't been used for some time. You do have to be careful if a uh, TV has been used recently. Uh, when I say recently, within a day or so, because they can have charge in the capacitors. Um, but really, there's not many CRT TVs these days that have actually been used and then thrown out, and then you've picked them up for scrap within the same day. But it's a good practice to get into. Now, this board just slips up. Most of them come out very easily. We don't really want the board, but it's easier to get to the cables. There we go, it's usually just a couple of plastic clips. And then we can take the rest of the wires out. Now there's plenty of people that will salvage parts off this. Um, you could save the IC chips, there's a few on there. Uh, you could save the transformers. Uh, there's cast aluminium, or not, sorry, there's extruded aluminium heat sinks on the MOSFETs. So there's a few little bits on there for parts if you uh, want to save those. Uh, I sometimes pop the fuse off as well, I put them in a jar. I'm not going to worry, I'm just doing this very quickly, just grabbing the main bits. And the board can go back in when we put the cover on it. So we'll keep cutting the wires out. There's our degaussing cable, we'll get to that shortly. And we will take this, um, this tinned braided wire, because it is copper and it's easy to access. So that's it. If you don't want the parts on the board, they can just drop straight back in. I might take the speakers out of this while we're here. It only takes a few seconds. They look pretty good. Some people buy them. I just sell them for a few dollars each. Alternatively, you could actually take the magnet off them or they can just go in your dirty shred steel. Okay, that's all we want. Let's put the cover back on. And we'll just put a screw back in each corner. And that TV is now done. So we'll put that in a pole to go to the transfer station and we'll attack the other one. Okay, now we'll attack the Panasonic. Most of these TVs, all, they're all pretty much the same. And once you get in a bit of a, a rhythm, they come apart very easily. Now same deal here, unplug the board. Snip some wires off. And there's the board there. There's also a few other things on here. Uh, there's a crystal. Some people collect crystals. Uh, supposed to have a small amount of silver in them. I'll probably do some videos on, on getting, depopulating some of these parts and the weights and just to see how profitable it is. But I'm not worried about these boards at the moment. I'm just throwing them back in to go to the e-waste. It really depends on the time you've got to commit to the job. Uh, if you've got plenty of time and you enjoy it, then go for it. This video is more about just economics and what I usually do with these TVs. Now, that one came off pretty easy.
good degaussing cable there. Some of these are heavier than others. And I believe some of the later ones were actually aluminium, so we'll check that in a minute. And we've only got one speaker here. We'll take him out while we're here. Neat little speaker, but you can tell it's a budget TV. There's only one little speaker in there. And it was put together with sticky tape. Righto. Put our bits back in there that we don't want. And put the cover back on. And the TV's done. So the time to do those TVs was probably, look, it took me about eight or nine minutes, but I was explaining things on video and I had to go and get another spanner, uh, screwdriver at one stage. I would say easily five minutes per TV. And I think that's pretty accurate. It doesn't take very long at all to whip the back cover off, clip the bits out that you saw and what we've got here. And I've even taken the speakers out as well. So really for 10 minutes for two TVs, the time is going to be a little bit more involved in cleaning this up. So let's separate it all now and see what we have to do. So what we have is some insulated copper wire. Um, I need to take all the plastic bits off and the plugs off it. Uh, so we'll clean it up in a second and keep a track of our time. Uh, there's also that braided copper and I even forgot to look in the second one. I didn't notice it, but they've nearly always got it. It's neither really here nor there. Um, I'll keep the spring though off it. Um, we have the degaussing cables. I'll snip the insulated wire off that and then we'll strip those. So I'll show you how long it takes me to do those. I just run a knife along the, the um, tape. It's actually like hand wound with electrical tape. So I don't know how it goes in a wire stripping machine. Uh, comment if you've actually got a stripper. Uh, I just do it with a blade. Um, but I would imagine because it's kind of sticky once you get into it that it might muck up the copper stripping machine. So let me know how you go with that stuff. Uh, we have three speakers, one of which I noticed when I threw in the box I actually damaged, but no big drama, I only sell them for a dollar or two each. And we might take the magnets off those two perhaps, and then that can go in the one dollar box. And a little bit of hardware, just some stainless steel clips, and a few screws. Uh, and of course the yokes, and we'll, we'll scrap them apart too. So the micro scrapping now takes a little bit more time. We're only in this job at about 10 minutes at this stage. So I'll first clean up that wire then we'll look at stripping that one and then we'll process the yokes. All right, we'll start with a little bit of insulated wire that I'd left on the, the yokes. We might as well get it all. And a little bit on this one too. It's probably easier to snip them off at the terminals when you're pulling these out. But I was just whipping them out quickly. All right, now all the plugs have got to come off and I do take um, things like um, cable ties and that sort of stuff off and plastic things like this because you want your sample to be nice and pure at the scrapyard and don't give the guys any reason to um, downgrade your load if it's all nice and clean you'll get a good reputation for delivering a good clean sample which will help with your bottom line now the mains plugs I know a lot of people pull the pins out of them. At this stage, I did a trial a while back, and I'll link the video in here. Uh, and I decided it wasn't really worth it, but it does depend on how much you value your time. But I am still saving them. I just can't help myself. And I might maybe one day come up with some sort of idea that does it much quicker. So we'll hang on to them for now. I do believe um, that some yards actually buy plugs. So if your yard does buy plugs just for the brass content, let me know in the comments. I'd be interested to hear what price they pay. And we'll just get the insulated wire off the ends of the uh, degaussing cables. So that's pretty well cleaned up our wire. We'll weigh that in a tick. We have a little bit of braided copper, as I said. Uh, it's probably not worth going to the effort to weigh that. I'll take the spring off. But uh, look, it's neither here nor there if you take that. Um, I find that I just, it's easy to clip out, so I take it. Okay, now to attack the degaussing cable. Um, there's probably quicker ways of doing this, and let me know how you do it. I just run a sharp blade around on top of the plastic. And 
because it's the wire isn't a single strand it's a multi strand um, I find it tends it tracks pretty well along the insulation uh, I know some people like to slide a knife along horizontally but I find that it grabs all the individual strands and and doesn't sort of do a very neat job this way it takes a little bit of time but uh, I don't mind it and then what you'll find that you can just open it up like that beautiful clean Milbury copper or bare bright and uh, it peels out really easily so I'll finish these two up and then we'll be able to weigh that at the end as well the tape's very soft to cut through so a nice sharp blade you really don't have to put very much pressure on it and then you just peel all the copper out and we can now coil it up you get a fair bit of weight in this uh, and some of the larger tallies have a uh, a really thick degaussing cable and uh, it does add up to quite a bit of weight there's one let's do the other so I've just ran the blade down the other one and this one's actually a thicker stranded one uh, slightly thicker diameter but also the individual strands seem to be thicker and it was really easy to run the knife along because if you dip the knife in and it's a nice sharp blade it will track all along and the wires inside almost hold the blade in position although they are twisted but I find that yeah a good sharp blade and it really doesn't take long at all so to get both of these degaussing cables stripped we were looking at around about well, I was about three minutes each so about six minutes um, and again because I'm organizing things to be filmed it takes a little bit longer but uh, no it's well worth stripping this cable but yes as I mentioned earlier certainly let me know if you have another way of stripping this and how it actually goes on your um, wire stripping machines yeah this is a good chunk of copper this one nice and thick beautiful look at that Gotta love a look of copper. And that's how I wrap it up. Bit of a twist and it stays together. A nice heavy chunk. We'll put that with the other one. Now the next thing is to look at the yokes. Okay, so we've got um, insulated copper. It's not insulated with plastic. It's actually lacquered. And it sells as um, number two copper. Or burnt copper, I think some people call it. So we've got to get it out of the assembly here. Now the middle sections will come out on their own um, once we break out the plastic housing. The ones on the sides here are actually wound around ferrite pieces and they'll need to be broken uh, with a hammer. Now they have spring-loaded clips on the sides which lever out pretty well. The other thing is a lot of these yokes uh, have a, a waxy type uh, resin which can be a bit of a pain to get off depends some of them come apart really easily some of them put up a real fight and it's hard to get them clean the other thing is we've got a couple of coils on here so they can actually you can either pull the copper out of those or they can actually go in the transformer bucket but they're quite easy to break the ends off and just pull the copper off so we'll do that in a second uh, this little piece can come off now the plastic clips Rather than trying to unclip them, because we're not worried about putting it back together, I just cut them off. Or just even pliers, even if you squash them so that it breaks the clips, it'll help you get the thing apart. There's also clips at the bottom, and sometimes you can just cut straight through. As long as you break, break the plastic out, so the thing comes in half. Now this one's a bit different, it's got metal brackets on it, you don't always see them like this. But we should be able to just flick those off. And they can go in with their pressing steel and the one on the other side and you can see all this resin type stuff there uh, sometimes it's brittle and it will just break off other times it presents a bit of a problem and it just hangs on now we're probably best to separate the ferrite bits first and this part is holding these together in this one we'll give it a bit of a thump and there we go 
So we'll get these ferrite pieces off first. And there's a few spring clips still holding this plastic housing together. And once we get those out, it should just about fall apart. Well, I put up a bit of a fight, this one. They're often easier than this. I guess that's Murphy's Law. When you're filming, things don't go to plan. So there's the first two sections, and they always come out fairly clean. You're just going to have to make sure there's not too much resin on there, or the uh, scrapyard will frown upon it. As I said, sometimes the resin just taps off really cleanly. Other times it sticks. That's pretty good. Well, those two can go into our number two copper. Or burnt copper. Now, you can see the ferrite section's already broken on this one. Uh, it is very brittle stuff. And you kind of don't want slithers of it around on the ground. It's a bit like glass. I'm probably best, I think, just to put a rag over the top of it and hit it with a hammer. Okay, we'll give this a go. Stops any bits flying around and the danger of getting a piece in your eye too. So it looks like the resin's going to come off this one pretty good. There we go. You can see what I mean? And we do need to get all this ferrite out because that will um, contaminate the load and as much of this resin stuff as you can without going to too much trouble. If you've got a big chunk that's stuck on a little wire, just cut the wire off. And we're getting a clean enough sample there. This piece should break in half. There we go. Fractured it into bits and then it falls out. So it's a bit fiddly this part, but it does add up to be quite a bit of copper after a while. And we can boil that up. Nice little lump of copper, we'll do the other one and then we'll attack this other uh, yoke. This one has a couple of different sorts of coils and these you can usually just lever up. Breaks the plastic. And I don't bother about stripping those ones, I'll just throw them in with the transformers. They're only small but they add up to a bit of weight. So this one came apart really easily. You know, Murphy's Law, I always film the one that causes trouble and the one that comes apart easily is a piece of cake. Anyway, um, this one didn't have as much wax on it. It broke apart really nicely. And um, you can see we've got our outer ones off and they're pretty clean. And as you can see, there's not as much wax on these and it peels off. When I say wax, it's yeah, resin of some sort. It peels off very easily. So um, we'll break these ones up now. Um, in my experience, this part is the most time consuming part. So if you don't want to go to this much trouble, these bits, you know, even though there's nice copper glaring at you, um, it might be better to leave this part out if you're short on time. But uh, once you do a few, it actually gets a bit quicker. And as I said, some of them are much easier than others. This one's coming apart really nice. Uh, I think it's mainly that resin that causes the grief. And I find some of the ferrite stuff breaks much easier than others, so perhaps there's different qualities of that. So now our TVs are all scrapped out. We've got all our individual piles of goodies. I've got my scales ready and I've teared them off to that cardboard box, or close to, actually. It's not quite right, is it? Um, so, let's go to the notepad. Well, our time. Our initial scrap out to pull the good bits out of the TV was 10 minutes. Well, that, that was out of two TVs. We then cleaned up the insulated wire. And that would just meant pulling the plugs off it. Insulated wire. Making sure it's a clean sample. Uh, about three minutes. And then we stripped the degaussing cables 
and there's no other wire worth stripping it was all quite fine but as you saw there's some good copper in the degaussing cables uh, one of them was quicker than the other because it was heavier co uh, copper and it seems to make much uh, a difference if you're doing bigger tvs you'll get a lot more copper out of them too so that was about six minutes and then we what do we do next we had the yokes which was the most time consuming uh, one of them put up much more of a fight than the other the other came apart really easily it was about six minutes and about three minutes so nine minutes there and i could certainly do it quicker than this um but and once if you did a few in a row you'd really start to whip through you'd, you'd learn some shortcuts but this was a pretty easily easily achievable time uh, and that's what we spent to get all our individual pieces here and i've got those speakers a little bit of hardware and the insulated wire so what did that end up we've got 10 13 minutes 19 minutes and nine's 28 minutes so just under half an hour you could certainly bring that down a bit no problems so what value did we get in our half an hour well let's weigh it up and see now i did mention the prices are pretty good at the moment and i've rounded the prices down a little bit for making it easy to calculate and also the fact that prices aren't always good so insulated wire we've got 20 250 grams quarter of a kilo and we will start our pricing here so we've got insulated wire 250 grams now i was quoted two dollars ninety recently which is probably the highest i've ever seen it but we're going to work on 250 and that will give us a whisker over 60 cents the next one was the uh, bright uh, bear bright or um uh, milbury copper i'll say bear bright copper it's called different things in different parts of the world and that weighed out let's weigh that i'll get rid of this insulated wire out of the box and that was these two from the degaussing cables nice chunky bits and if you're into um if you're into making uh casting things out of copper that's great copper to use uh we've got 350 grams there 350 grams now recently i was quoted uh eight dollars forty i think which is excellent i'm just going to work on eight and that works out at around about two dollars eighty worth of copper so that will go in my box of good value copper our next lot was the burnt copper or um, lacquered copper and i did strip out those little coils um, they came apart very easily i didn't do the other ones these two i'll be throwing them just in my transformers i'm not actually going to count those so our burnt copper is uh what do we got we've got 430 grams and burnt 430 uh, i'm going to allow seven dollars fifty for that um, the last price list i had didn't actually mention burnt copper but i would say it would be at least that and that works out at three dollars twenty so you can see there's some pretty good value for copper in these TVs, considering these are only small 20-inch screen ones. So tip that one out. And that's all we have to weigh. Uh, so scrap value, let's get a total. Uh, 80, 20 is a dollar, 60, 3, 2, so $6.60 for scrap. Uh, and... I'm going to say a dollar each for these because I can easily sell the magnets um, but that speaker I'll just put in the in the shop for a dollar I'm not a, not counting those two I'm not counting the plugs there was a little bit of tinned braided copper I'm not counting and there's also a bit of hardware that I can sell and that does accumulate but I'm not counting any of that because most of you guys won't have an access to sell that and having to avenue to sell that you would probably put those speakers in your dirty shred so they will add up to a little bit but if we go one two three 
forget about the rest. That takes my total to almost $10 for a couple of small CRT TVs in under half an hour. Uh, I reckon if I wasn't filming and if I did a few in a row, I'd get that down quite a bit. Throw in a few larger TVs as well, and we're going to increase the weights. I'm also going to increase my hardware. I'm going to be making upwards of, say, $15, half an hour, $30 an hour. So good value, I reckon. These older TVs, some great copper in them. There's plenty of videos on YouTube showing getting copper out of these TVs. Um, certainly way better than your modern flat screen TVs for sure. And these, go, these guys are going to dry up. We're going to get less and less of these. So grab them when you see them, I reckon. Remember to check that they're not a valuable TV. Now all I have to do is get rid of the old TVs. And I take them out to the transfer station. They'll still get recycled. So nothing's going to landfill. Okay, thanks for watching. Catch you in the next video.